Hey everyone, Surreal Canine here. Welcome back for more Disguise 3 Absence of Detention. In the last episode, we did the bios for the default generic characters. In this episode, we are going to cover the first group of seven unlockable characters, the easiest to unlock as their, uh, their unlocking re level requirements are pretty low. These would be the Ranger and Archer, the Heavy Knight, the Beastmaster, the Gunner, Gunslinger, and the Wise Man. Hey there, Dalsim. How's it going? <laughs> Alright. Let's begin. First up, we have the Ranger and Archer. The Ranger uh, requires a level 15 Fighter and Priest to unlock. The Archer requires a level 15 Cleric and Valkyrie to unlock. As for their uh, aptitude differences, the Ranger has 25 more speed than the Archer, and the Archer has 10 more res than the Ranger. Uh, make of the total difference what you will, I guess. <laughs> As for their skills, uh, the Ranger learns 6 bow, 3 sword skills. The Archer learns 6 bow, 3 spear skills. Their abilities are as follows. Positional energy uh, increases the Ranger's attack power when, his height at, when he is higher up than his enemies. The Archer uh, powers up her attacks with Excel shot when she is a greater distance away. So flat 30% bonus versus um, versus say a conditional distance bonus. Not good enough. The Ranger's next ability, Hunter's Range, increases his hit by 30% if his if he keeps his distance from his enemy. The Archer has Hawk Down, which uh, does extra damage to a flying enemy. The, the Ranger's Girl Hunt deals extra damage to women, whereas the Archer's Boy Hunt deals extra damage to men. Finally, the Ranger's Bow Focus adds 30% of his hit to his attack when a bow is equipped. The Archer's Bow Range uh, increases her attack range by one when her bow is a, when she has a bow equipped. So from this we can conclude that the ranger is a bit more offensive than the archer, but the archer is generally more versatile and a bit more situation. Well, they both they're both pretty situational, I guess, with some of their abilities, but whatever. <laughs> Let's talk about their skills. Take aim. Targets will be hit no matter what. This is evidently a. Uh, this evidently has a similar range to uh, magic spells. And past me is kind of just uh, stalling for no reason here. <laughs> Good to know. Good to know. Right, like I said, similar range to a magic spell. Very uh, dynamic attack animation there. <laughs> the archer has five different status effect arrows, one for uh, each kind of status effect. So, uh, yeah, we're going to show them all off. It's not a... I forgot how I was going to end that sentence. <laughs> oh, well. Floater shot, which uh, I did not actually read the description for that. But, um, I think it does more damage to flying type enemies. Uh, future me, you can go ahead and uh, 
confirm that for me, I guess. <laughs> <clears throat> Let's just see the other types of status arrows. They all have pretty similar animations, actually. Minus the end part. in that cube. It did a thing which you take offense to. I don't know. <laughs> gotcha. Okay, now that's all taken care of. <laughs> We're uh, going to show off these things one last time. So that I gotta say to you, Mr. Lebeau Focus, you are the thing to do with the other thing, and you're crazy, and I am bombs. I don't even know. <laughs> My insults need to be more grammatical. They also need to make sense. Anyway, next up we have... The Heavy Knight! He's slow. He also likes spears, a lot. He learns six spear skills, five axe skills, and his aptitudes uh, greatly favor HP, defense, and res. Along with attack and, to a lesser extent, hit, his other aptitudes are pretty bad. <laughs> anyway, his, his primary ability, Aegis, decreases his damage by 30% when attacked from the front. Last Fortress increases his defense and res when his HP is critical. His other two abilities are Advanced Guard, which decreases his damage by 80% when defending. Wow. And Spear Defense, which increases hit, which adds 30% of his attack to his defense when his spear is equipped. Pretty great, if I do say so myself. You ready? Another interesting thing about the uh, Heavy Knight is that ever since uh, their debut in Disgaea 2, they have uh, been considered the best throwers. Besides uh, Koberde-san, but uh, he's a unique character. He doesn't count. <laughs> anyway, yeah. If you need a thrower, the Heavy Knight is your guy. Um, past me? What are you doing? Yeah, okay then. <laughs> uh, legit shield reduces damage taken by attacks. Uh, evidently, this is to be used on your allies. Um, 
I guess it's just the flat out damage reduction compared to a compared to a defensive res buff, which is pretty neat, I guess. I approve. Next up, we have the Beastmaster, who you, um... Oh, by the way, Heavy Knight, you unlock by having a level 15 fighter and martial artist. As for the Beastmaster... Doo -doo 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 -doo, you get her by, uh, recruiting a level 15 uh, fight mistress and Valkyrie. Okay? Okay. The Beastmaster, um has some pretty good offensive aptitudes. High attack, defense, hit. Uh, she uh, she has equal skill between the spear, axe, and bow. Uh, I gave her an axe just because. She learns five skills from each of them. Her primary ability is Dark Tamer, which increases the stats of adjacent ally monsters by 20%. So, kind of like... Um, Kind of like Beauty of Sin, kind of like uh, Princess Glitter. It applies to monsters. Synchronize uh, maxes out her uh, team attack rate with a monster. So that's a constant 99%. Pretty great. Dark Blood is an ability shared by Samurai... or not Samurai Goro. Uh, <laughs> Animal King Goro. Uh... It increases her stats by 5% per monster unit on the map. I'm assuming that means allied monster unit. Her final ability, Magic Change Weapon Master, uh, increases her aptitudes by 20% when a Magic Change Weapon is equipped. So uh, she might be pretty good to pair up with Gig, I don't know. Anyway, um... Dominate... Uh, doesn't have quite the ridiculously high effect that it had in Disgaea 2, but since you can power it up through the, uh, whoa, through the ability shop, that is just fine. And my laptop almost fell off my lap because of the way I'm sitting. <laughs> Pretty great. Attention. All right. Um. What are we doing now? What? Am I trying to de I guess I'm trying to demo something with the... Yeah, I guess I'm trying to demo that last ability there. Oh, extend magic change. I forgot that was a thing. <laughs> okay, that gives her uh, more time to use a magic change. Pretty handy. Again, especially when paired up with Gig. <laughs> or really any uh, magic change weapon you really like. Um, anyway. Somebody is playing Terraria. Next up, we have the Gunner and the Gunslinger. Both gun users, obviously. To recruit the Gunner, you need a level 15, 15 Skull and Thief. To recruit the Gunslinger, you need a level 15 Mage and Thief. As for their aptitude differences, the Gunner has 10 extra attack and the Gunslinger has 10 extra int. Neither of these are all that useful. <laughs> As for the, uh, as for their abilities, the gunner's marking, uh, guarantees a crit rate, uh, for the next ally to attack during a combo. His assist, uh, guarantees a hit on the next ally to attack during a combo. Pretty nice, very, uh, very big team player. The uh, Gunslinger has completely different abilities. <laughs> Big Chance increases bonus gain by 50% if she's part of a combo, and Gold Finger uh, doubles your cash gain if you're uh, if she does the killing blow. 
As for the other two abilities, um, as for the other two abilities, uh, the gunner has second attack, which uh, increases damage dealt during the combo, and gun trick, which adds 30% of his hit to his speed when his when a gun is equipped. The gun slinger has treasure hunt, 30% chance for a chest to appear if the killing blow is dealt. And Long Shot, which increases attack range by one panel when a gun is equipped. <laughs> and Rutil does not like getting shot. Finally, there are, there are weapon skills. Both of them learn six gun skills, obviously. The Gunner also learns three fist skills, and the Gunslinger learns three bow skills. Okay? Okay. Let's talk about their, um... Oh, let's uh, get them back into fighting condition, <laughs> and then we will talk about unique skills. The Jumping Rock Toss has a very high range, eight panels in a straight line. Um, so it has its uses. Metal Sling has a range of seven, and it, uh, it's a 1x3 area, like so. A bit less useful than uh, than Jumping Rock Toss, but you know, whatever. <laughs> also, I am having trouble placing my unit correctly. Overstrike uh, does more damage at a range, so kind of like uh, the archer's attacks. Pretty interesting. No kill like overkill. <laughs> Detect Vitals uh, guarantees a crit rate, uh, guarantees a critical hit against its target for uh, three turns. Pretty nice, if professionals weren't already a thing. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Take that, dude! For the, uh,. For the wise man, we are going to uh, jump into the item world because the wise man is the king of the item world. <laughs> Let's check him out. To unlock the wise man, you need a level 20 martial artist or fist fighter and a level 20 priest or cleric. Okay? Okay. Geo energy increases his stats per geo block color on the map. Geo dimension makes him immune to geo chains. Whereas his other two abilities are also uh, very good in the uh, whatever. Um, his other two abilities are Geo Absorbers, which nullifies damage from falling off a Geo Block, and Strange Force, which increases his stats by 10% per bonus rank gained. So uh, yeah, like I said, King of the Item World, and that is also reflected in his uh, in his unique skills here. As you can see, he learns three each of the uh, star and heal spells, along with three uh, three fist skills, and I taught him Big Bang through the class world, so never mind Big Bang. <laughs> His unique skills are Geo Change, which gives you a one-time chance to uh, rearrange all the Geo panels and symbols. It's a bit of a gamble, but it could get you just the chain you need to... Uh, be able to get that uh, legendary rank 39 item. Let's watch everybody gang up on the innocent. <laughs> Alright, now then. Bonus change! Changes the, uh, changes the, uh, the 
list of bonus items you can get at the end of the stage. This can be used as many times as you want, as long as you have the SP for it. And this computer just keeps falling off the thing. Next up, we have Geoblast, which destroys a selected Geoblock. Um, it works at a long range, but um, it does not work against invincible Geoblocks, nor does it work against the uh, Geoblocks sitting on a reverse damage panel. So uh, just watch out for those. Finally, we have Geo Warp, which uh, lets him teleport. That's pretty okay, I guess. Diagonal throwing is probably better. <laughs> Alright, so that is the wise man. Oh yeah, you uh, you might see a uh, bonus blast skills being used by enemy uh, wise men in the item world. Your wise men cannot learn that. The skill exists purely to annoy you. <laughs> okay? Okay. So that being said, uh, we are done with these seven uh, generic classes. And in the next episode, we are going to be doing the next group of generic classes. Alright? Alright. See you guys then. Bye bye